Well, Mitchell, I said news. My name is Rob. And there are stories that come out that make you think about what's really going on in the crypto space. And one of those stories is this. This is a tweet from Brian Armstrong. He is the CEO of Coinbase. And he talks about how we're hearing rumors that the SEC would like to get rid of crypto staking in the U.S. for retail customers. And before anybody, if you, before you say, well, you know, that's just rumor, Rob. Why do you even bring these things up? First of all, it's not from some Joe Blow taxi cab driver who's like, I heard this story from a guy who knows a guy. This is the CEO of Coinbase, the largest exchange in the United States, not in the world, the United States. And then also the same guy that's uh, really taking a look at this would be Gary Gensler. And we covered a story not too long ago, over a year ago, where it was a rumor that Voyager and Celsius were in the crosshairs of the SEC. And look how that turned out. So on top of this, when I see something like this, I have to give it merit because there's no reason why Brian Armstrong would put out a tweet talking about there's a potential stoppage of staking for retail customers, which would hurt his business. I believe where there's smoke, there's fire. Here's what he says. He says, I hope that's not the case as I believe it would be a terrible path to the US if this was allowed to happen. Staking is really important innovation in crypto. He says staking is not a security. Here's a good primer and there's a legal argument here in this document, which I will link in the description. You can read the whole thing. It was quite fascinating, but again, it all depends on um, who gets in front of this and and, and which, which law firm would like to take this up and say, okay, this is what it is versus the SEC and so forth. We need to make sure new tech uh, are encouraged to grow in the US, not stifled by lack of clear rules. Regulation by enforcement doesn't work. It encourages companies to operate offshore, like what happened with FTX. We know how great that turned out. Hopefully we can work together to publish clear rules for the industry and come up with sensible solutions that protect consumers while preserving innovation. So we have this part. And then of course, this is just from Brian. And then also there was a tweet from Paul Grewal and he is the chief legal officer. And he had to respond to people like uh, Andrew, AP Abacus. I don't know who this guy is, founder X3, finance, Bitcoin, blockchain. And, um, he says, update, Coinbase has been told to wind down crypto staking or face fines and then more debilitating actions. Now, I don't know what he knows, but Paul came out and said, uh, that's totally false. It's not what's going on. However, where there is smoke, there's fire. And I will just say this. I don't know exactly what's happening in this sector as far as staking, but you have to understand the U.S. government can do this. They can go to uh, a centralized authority and say, we're not going to allow you to do these things. And we're going to shut it down. However, does that mean that the U.S. government can go to every single country and say, we need you to shut down your staking operations? No, it cannot. Also, does that mean that if you run a staking pool that has nodes throughout the entire globe, that they can shut you down? No, it does not. Does that mean that people who are around in this vicinity cannot stake their crypto in a decentralized manner? No, it does not. So there's a big difference between them going to a centralized exchange and saying, shut it down. You can't do any staking. You can't do any earn. You can't do any loans. You can't do this. We're not going to allow you as opposed to the decentralized manner. No, it does not. So on top of that, I, um, to finish this whole thing up, I just got to ask the question, why do you have crypto on exchanges? There's a reason why I have these rules underneath me. It's not just to waste my breath. Uh, the first one is it's all gone. Meaning if you have this idea that it's all gone, you're not going to invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. 0% on exchanges, meaning you can use exchanges. You have to use exchanges to, to transcribe your, your, your fiat into crypto, but you don't have to leave it there. You can use an Anna Ledger, you can use a Trezor, you can use an Arculus, and you can self-custody. It's very easy. I got a website. I made it for you for free. Dan teaches crypto.com. I show you exactly how to do it. There's a link in the description. Very simple. Also, don't use leverage and take profits along the way. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. And then on top of that, uh, as far as self-custody, why do you have on exchanges anyhow? Why is everybody staking with exchange? I don't get it. So there's a link in the description of every video that I do. If you just scroll down, it will say Dan Cardano stake pool. So for we have a stake pool for Cardano. We used to have one for Avalanche. Don't do that anymore. But if you click on this and you have Cardano, uh, it'll take you to our website. And there's a little video that's going to pop up. It's going to show you exactly how to do it. Yeah, there it is right there. 
And then this is how we compare it to everything else. And there's other ways that you can, if you go to also stakingrewards.com, I'll link in the description, you can find other stake pools. So this is just one option for you. And I just want to bring this to your attention. Does this mean that we are definitely going to stop staking the US? No, it does not. However, when we see these types of stories, because we just got done talking about how bullish the sentiment was, how there's big institutions coming in, how I believe things are going to do pretty well, but it never goes in a straight line. It does never go straight up. It becomes bumpy. And if it was easy, everybody would do it. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And then to finish up, this is our, uh, our second video series. I sat down with the CEO of Masterworks, Scott Lynn, because there was this well, first of all, just so you know, I invest into Masterworks. I'm super biased. I only talk about the things that I invest into, okay? So the crypto I talk about, it's because I invest into it. Masterworks, land, and and uh, and real estates, and IRAs, and stocks, and all that stuff. I, that's, that's what I, I try to diversify as much as possible. But this issue came up, and this is in the SEC filing, because with Masterworks, it's you're buying fractionalized shares of artwork. But there's a part in there which gets has gotten a lot of traction. It talks about conflicts of interest and how there, there is a conflict of interest between Masterworks and you, the person who is investing in this fractionalized share of artwork. So I'm going to have, I asked this to, to Scott and I asked him point blank and I'm going to listen, have you listen to his answer. It's about three minutes long. I'll be right back. Conflicting interests. And this is, was all brought to, to my attention in multiple different videos about the conflicts of interest. And actually, uh, a user, a subscriber, Scotty Yo says, I, I would not touch masterpiece, well, Masterworks as an investment. This is a lobster pot. Easy to get into and hard to get out. Please read the terms and conditions under risk. Uh, just forget about it, not financial advice. Jason says, agreed, this is a horrible investment in my opinion. Not your wall, not your art. And of course, when they're talking about these things, everything that you guys have, this is fractionalized shares of art. You have to file with the SEC. That's why we took a look at all these different filings that you have. And underneath there, there's a couple of different sections. And it talks about, we don't expect to generate any material amount of revenues or cash flow unless the artwork is sold. We're undiversified. You guys stick everything in with the art pieces. The artwork may be sold at a loss or at a price that results in a distribution that is below the purchase price of the class A shares or no distribution at all. And to further break this down, this is the piece I think they're really talking about. Masterworks financial agreements arrangements may result in misalignment between its interests and the interests of class A shareholders. Affiliates will have substantially complete discretion to determine when and if to sell the artwork. Since Masterwork earns management fees and incurs maintenance and other ongoing costs, so long as the artwork is owned by us, we have economic incentives to, to disincentivize, to sell the artwork that are misaligned with the interest of shareholders. There's a risk that Masterworks and its affiliates will have conflicts of interest. No assurance can be given, whatever is in the best interest of shareholders. So that was a long question, but Scott, talk to us about the misalignment of interest here. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a long question. So so maybe let's take a step back and just talk about what what are risk disclosures. Uh, so many, many investors are probably familiar with um, a typical public company offering circular, right? So that would be mm -hmm. an S1 when, when, for example, a tech company goes public. Right. Um, when you read risk disclosures in any public offering circular, there are oftentimes hundreds of risk disclosures. And that's, that's something that the SEC requires when they're, they're reviewing uh, a particular offering is they want to make sure that every single risk that they can think of and the company can think of, in our case, a company is an individual painting, um, should be disclosed to an investor. Okay. So while we think a lot of these risks are, are remote, they're, they're still required to be disclosed. So that particular risk disclosure, if you, if you go back to that one, that's really speaking about this, this high level idea that um, our management fees are earned in equity which from an investor perspective is very good. Right. But at the same time, we incur actual expenses to maintain that painting, such as insurance, storage, et cetera. So while we're not earning our management fees in cash, um, we are coming out of pocket to pay expenses for, for that particular vehicle. So I think from an investor perspective, this dynamic is still very good, right? Like our management fees are, are earned in equity and therefore aligned with the painting appreciating in value but we do have a cash expense to maintain 
uh, that painting from the storage and insurance perspective that, that, that could, could, you know, deviate from the fees that we're earning in the equity. Okay, great. So I hope that made sense. But remember, there is no investment out there that is 100% perfect. There is nothing out there that will give you 1 million percent gains or something crazy like that. Every single investment has risk. So it's important to do your own research. And for Pete's sakes, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, just diversify. That's I, I really can't tell you to, to diversify. I'm not a financial advisor, all that good stuff. But I diversify. worked out pretty well for me. You can do whatever you want to do and go from there. And then lastly, uh, this is, it is February 9th, 2023. If you are so inclined uh, this weekend, you're in Puerto Rico or the Puerto Rico area, I will be at Amigos de los Animales. There's a link in the description for their website. And every Sunday at 8 a.m., I'm just asking you to help me out because they have, they have about 40 or 50 different uh, uh, shelter dogs that are there. And they always need to be walked. So what I usually do is I go there on Sunday, walk the dogs, and then uh, come with me. We'll talk crypto. I'll treat you to uh, breakfast, uh, wherever you guys want to go. And usually we try to get a, a group to go out there and help to walk the dogs along with other volunteers. And that's what's going on today. So look, that concludes today for the news. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Now, a lot of things to talk about are time sensitive, as you just saw. But uh, that is it. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.